Solving compound inequalities, uh, first of all, like, I don't, what is a, a compound inequality? Compound means more than one, right? So this is definitely an inequality. You have your, your kind of less than sign and your less than sign. Um, and so compound means two at one time. And there's like a slick way to do this, like a, a pretty cool way. Or um, you can do it in more, a little more of a straightforward way. So this is obviously like two problems somehow tied into one problem. So some kids, what they do is they actually write them differently. They're like, ah, oh, this is super complicated. I'm going to write this one, 2x, excuse me, no x. All right, so you have negative 2 is less than 3x plus 1. You see how it stops at the next inequality sign. And then over here, they'll be like, okay, well, I get it. And this is pretty easy. I'll do 3x plus 1 is less than 7. And then this goes back to earlier videos. Well, that's easy. I'll just solve these inequalities and everyone's going to be happy. This one right here, you say minus 1 minus 1. Negative 3 is less than 3x. Divide both sides by your 3 to get x alone. And then here you're done. Negative 1 is less than x or x is greater than negative 1. Over here, same deal. Let's get this 1 out of here. You know, you're going to subtract it across to the other side of the inequality sign. So then you're going to have 3x is less than 6. Divide by 3, divide by 3, x is less than 2. So what's cool about this is <laughs> if x is less than 2 and greater than negative 1, if you were to somehow graph this, it would look like this. You have 2, open dot, open circle, right? Not closed because it's not also equal to. It's less than 2 and it's greater than negative 1. So here's your negative 1 sign. It's in here. And this gets a little confusing. I'll explain. There's a concept uh, where the answers are either and or or. And this would be an and because the answers are true to both this and this. Just hang on. We'll, I'll show you another example where there's an or. So that's it. It's pretty cool. I mean, now that I showed you that way, I guess I'll show you the super slick way to do it. And that is you could, I'm not going to do the whole problem in the interest of your attention span, but you could leave it like this and immediately solve it without breaking it into two separate problems. See this plus one? You know how you have to minus 1 to the other side? Well, now there's two other sides, right? Here and here. So you would minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. And now you'd have negative 3 less than 3x less than 6. That's pretty cool. And now you'd divide both sides, all three sides, by 3. And then you have your answer. It's a lot faster. And it's kind of cool, like, you know, if you know your friends are watching, you do your work, and you want to be the man or the woman. You would do it that way, and it's kind of cool. But again, it's the same answer. All right, so now let's do an or problem. So that was an and problem. It's a compound inequality. It's pretty straightforward. So here's another example. And you wouldn't even really know it's an or problem. <laughs> you wouldn't even really care. You would just solve it, and then it'll turn out suspiciously as an or problem. So they'll write or, and then they'll say 3x plus 1 is less than negative 8, for example. Okay. So when you solve this, you don't do the trick where you do them both at the same time. In this case, you have to do them separately anyways, right? So, oh, I want my x alone. I'm going to get the 6 out of here, plus 6. 5x is greater than or equal to 10. Divide both sides by 5, okay? It's pretty straightforward. So there's 1. You have x is greater than or equal to 2, okay? Now over here, let's minus that 1 to both sides. So now you have 3x is less than negative 9. Divide by 3, divide by 3. X is less than negative 3. So the reason this doesn't make sense to be an and problem is if you graph this and it said X is greater than or equal to 2. Here's your closed dot at 2. And now it's greater than or equal to in that direction. And then if you said S is, excuse me, X is less than negative 3, open circle, because it's not equal to, less than is that direction. So there's no overlap. So at no point is any number true to this and this. It can be true to this or this, but it can't be true to both because they don't overlap at all. Does that make any sense? I, it is a weird concept, the whole and versus or. Uh, I think the best way to look at it is you can be like, is Ryan helpful and cool? No, there's no overlap. Ryan's helpful, but he's definitely not cool. But if you said, is Ryan helpful or cool? The answer would be yes, he's helpful. He's one of those two. He's not both, but he's helpful. He's certainly not cool. I mean, I'm like a math tutor. That's ridiculous. So anyways, that's how you do these compound inequalities. I think they're okay. I think they're doable. Again, you can solve them separately or you solve them at the same time. But either way, the answer comes out the same. And beware of the and versus the or. And that's it. And if you're having a hard time at your local high school passing this class, take it online at Silicon Valley High School and pass it there and the credits will be transferred back to your school.